So another antenna. Um, I don't know if I got this off of eBay or AliExpress. Um, this one's by RF Enthusiasts. Now, my experience with buying Chinese things um, is that a lot of times these aren't from RF Enthusiasts. They're just a PC board that somebody developed and somebody in China just decided to clone it. I don't know, you know, they just take a picture of it and clone it or whatever, I don't know. Um, and then they sell it, you know, and try to make a profit. So, uh, 2019, okay, it's supposed to be a, a DB 2.45 gigahertz version 1.0, nice. This one comes with a little coax attached to it, so that's, that's pretty cool. Now, um, I sometimes get comments on the channel about me questioning things. Um, they say, hey, you know, the designer knows better. Why are you questioning it? You know, what, how, who are you to say, right? Um, I think I've, I've showed some things, though, that a lot of times the Chinese clones, right, there's an error. They, they, there's something lost in translation. And this is a great example of, uh, of something lost in translation. <laughs> okay, so it looks great, right? It's... Uh, it's got uh, a little, uh, uh, I really like this. This, this is the, the dipole, right? So it's one side of the dipole's here, one side of the dipole's here. There's a big reflector in the back that's ground. It's got some directors. And so it's a very, very nice Yagi design. So I really like the way that they actually fed the, the dipole, how it's, how it's actually implemented here. Uh, that's really, really cool. So all you really have to do is hook, hook, hook your center conductor up to that one, hook your ground, hook your ground up to that one, and uh, and you're ready to go, right? Well, <laughs> well, <laughs> I need I need to come way down for this just a second. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> you just solder your coax on. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. So they have the center conductor connected right here. The braid doesn't go anywhere. And that's where the center conductor is supposed to go over there. Um, so yeah, what a joke. I mean, you know, <laughs> they might be enthusiastic, but they have no idea what they're doing. <laughs> oh well. So I say that we move this over, huh? What do you say? Do I know what I'm doing, or am I just some stupid guy in his garage? <laughs> okay, well, let's, let's fix this one up. All right. Let's see if we can't remove this abomination. All right. And I don't know if this is, prob this is probably lead-free uh, lead junk. I'll call it junk. Do not like lead free solder. So I'm going to put some lead solder on there. And I'm going to put some lead solder over here. And uh, yeah, I think this will be muy bueno. Much better. All right, let me bend this little, uh, little bit over here so it'll lay down on the, uh, on the PC board. My favorite players. It's homemade. And put a little kink at the end. Perfect. All right. So, can I do this with six hands? Let's see here. Let me. I'll, I'm going to tin that little center section there with some lead on it. Okay, good. All right. So, I'm going to hold this here. Try not to get in the way of the camera. I will solder the center down. Perfect. All right, that's better. And then uh, we will solder down the braid. We're gonna have to be a little bit careful here because this is probably not the best quality coax here. So you don't want to get it hot and try melt the center. The, uh, the insulator. That's not really getting hot enough here. All right, let's do this side. All right, let's 
check out my handicraft here. Yeah, it's not really sticking to that. Not really wet into that coax. Let me use some flux. A lot of people scream at me for not using enough flux. They're probably right. They're probably right. I put some get some coax or coax. Put some flux on that side. Put some flux on this side. This is a Kester Kester flux. One one eighty six. That's just crummy coax. Chinese coax, sorry. Yeah, that'll do. That's that's not too bad. This side's really good. And this side's like okay. We'll just call it okay. Um People really freak out about the flux that's left over. It's just rosin. I mean it doesn't do a lot of harm. I usually remove it because it looks prettier, but <laughs> some people really think it does terrible things to your electronics, but I don't know. My experience is I've worked around a lot of really old BC boards from the 70s and 80s that have flux everywhere, and they're just fine. Maybe if you have a super high, uh, super high uh, frequency or more likely a really, really um, sensitive circuit that you can't have any leakage. Uh, it's good to clean the flux off. But I've never seen one, I've never seen a PC board damaged over age because it had flux on it. I really haven't. Sinus, tell me, tell me if you've had experiences with flux making everything go bad, but I think some people like learn particular things and then they take it as gospel and everybody must thou shalt Anyway, all right, so I think this is going to be much better. Let's hook it up to the, uh, let's hook it up to the VNA and uh, see how it does. I don't see any markings on the coax, what type it is. And, uh, does enter this connector a bit strange, but I guess that's okay. Yeah, we'll give it a try. All right, let's uh, change the uh, display scale here to five. There we go, we got a nice dip. Let's go measure the dip. Oops, wrong way. Oh, we're getting a dip. Oh, a little bit farther over. I say we're getting a dip at 2.6. And it's supposed to be at 2.45. Uh, so, it's a little bit short. Um, now, uh, I did not cal... So, a lot of times people say, you've got to cal your, got to cal your instrument every single time you use it. And that's, that's, that's somewhat true and somewhat not true. If you just want to get a quick look-see, just use the caliber. I calibrated this thing yesterday. And it, you know, if you just want to know where this thing is resonant, it's going to be good enough. Now, I will now calibrate and we'll measure it again and we'll see if we really get any difference or not. Okay, so let me go ahead and calibrate. People are wondering what is that little funny little wrench he's using there? What is that wheel? I will be having a video on that in an up and coming video. All right, uh, looks good, good, good cal to me. Let's uh, go ahead and uh, put our put our antenna back on. And we'll take a look. 
And look at that, the dip's in the same place. Um, and it's giving me about the same value. It might have, might be a little bit deeper, just a tiny bit, but basically it's the same. So do you need to calibrate every single time? Yeah, if you want to have a really good measurement, but if you're just using it to quickly check an antenna, what frequency is that antenna? Is it long? Is it short? Yeah, you don't need to recal. It's not going to help. Um, so, yeah, so let's see here. Let's put this thing at, what is it? It's two point. It says it's a 2.45, so let's uh, let's put our marker at 2.45. So there's our marker at 2.45. I gotta get rid of the glare here. Sorry, too much glare. Too much glare. Anyway, sorry. Um, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's not right. We pointed it up at sky, so it's not reflecting off of anything. People always say, "Oh, you know, you're gonna re you're gonna reflect off of everything." Uh, did it really change? No. I'm gonna point it down. Did it really change? No, not much. I'm gonna point it at a big chunk of metal. Point it at my microscope. Uh, did it really change? No, not really. <laughs> Get a life. Okay, so. I wish I had a better VNA, but I don't. Okay, so why is it 2.6 and not 2.4? Well, these aren't long enough. These things aren't long enough. These look, these look just from the get-go. These look too short. Um, if you start out with a, um, let's see if I have a, get something good to uh, here. Let me. It's hard to see both sides of the. Uh, sides of the dipoles. I'm going to take that. Okay, I'm going to snip this off here. All right. So this is the length. This is the length of the dipole, okay? I can look through to the other side. The other half of the dipole is down here. This is the length of the dipole. It's, it's that long, okay? Now, if I compare that with the reflector, the reflector should be longer. So the reflector, the reflector looks good. But this first director this first director just looks way too short to me. It just look, it looks way too short. Now, it should get shorter as you go out, but that one just looks that just looks too short to me. I don't like the design of this board. And if you look at these directors, they're all exactly the same length. Um, yeah, so I don't really like that. But they're short, um, which means they're going to resonate at a higher frequency. So I don't know. Um, I guess we could try to put copper tape and try to fix this thing up and everything, but I think it just just doesn't look right to me. It just doesn't look like a right, uh, correct design. So anyway, like I said, I do like the way that they did the dipole though. I really do like that. Um, this spacing back here too, the spacing between the uh, diode and the reflector seems a bit too wide to me. I don't know. Maybe I'm just getting picky in my old age, but this just, just, I don't know. A lot of things about this just doesn't strike me as correct. Comment below.